we come to the lecture number 14. The previous lecture we discussed about two types of classifications based on the type and based on the realm. Then now, to, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the classification of chitta based on the function and also based on the sankhara. There is a very also a very important classification based on vedana, uh, which I am unable to do uh, in at this moment, which also is also very important based on the vedana. Anyway, I'll be focusing only on the kicha and function and uh, sankhara. Go to, if you go to page number 19, please. Functioning of consciousness. Uh, functions of consciousness. 4.30. All the consciousness has their functions. There is no chitta which does not perform a function. Some consciousness ex execute few functions, but, but one at a time. But one at a time. There are 14 types of kichas, one at a time, uh, 14 types of kichas. What are these kichas? The Patisandhi function of rebirth linking, Bhavanga kicha function of life continuum, causing the life to continue, the mind stream, Avajana kicha function of adverting, Dasana kicha function of seeing, Samana kicha function of hearing, Ghayana kicha function of smelling, Sayana kicha function of tasting, Pusana kicha function of touching, Sampatichana is function of receiving, Sampirana function of investigating, Vachapana function of determining, Javana is the function, dynamic function, function of impulsive consciousness, these are the forceful consciousness, Tadaramana chitta function of registration. Registration means it has not much effective uh, contribution to our lives. Whatever the object which is taken by the forceful chittas, number uh, 12 chittas, javana chittas are retaken by kadaramana chittas at, a, at, a, at, the, at the end of a mind process. Then the number 14 chutti kicha is the function of time. So not is there in one, once, um, uh, one, one's life, in S should, not once, one's life, one apostrophe S, in one's life, similar chittas perform the Patisandhi, Bhavanga and Chutti functions. It means, for instance, if a being is born with the, get the Patisandhi with the first chitta of the eight Mahavipaka chittas, a similar Mahavipaka chitta will act as the Bhavanga, Chutti uh, and Chutti in his life. For example, number one, number two and number fourteen. Number one, number two and number fourteen. In a one particular life, the same chitta performs these fourteen, uh, the, these three functions. Same chitta doesn't mean that one chitta remains without vanishing. A similar type of chitta arises performing these three functions. It means in one life, they are the, the, the chitta which does which these three functions are determined by the kama which gave the river. Other uh, And other functions, they may differ. For example, the first function can be done by 19 chittas. Second function also by 19 chittas. The last function can also be done by, 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 done by 19 chittas. But in a one life, only one chitta, the same chitta, does all these functions. Does all these functions. Then we come, I'll be only talking about few uh, uh, chittas based on the functions. So, kicha, kicha beda. We normally call kicha sangha, we can call. So, I'll be talk, discussing about patisandhi chitta. Chutti Chitta, the 14th one, Bhavanga Chitta, and we talk about Javana Chitta. These are the four Chittas I will be discussing. There is another very important function called Avajana Chitta. Uh, I don't think we will have time to discuss about this. So among these other remaining functions, so avajana, avajana it means uh, adverting and determining. These two are also very important, adverting and determining functions. But I don't think we'll have much time to discuss on this. Anyway, we'll we'll try to uh, in the kamma session, kamma lesson. I'm thinking to discuss about these two functions because they are very important to understand the doctrine. So, Patisandhi function, Chitta and the Chutta Chitta. When I say Patisandhi Chitta means the Chitta which performs the Patisandhi function. Chutta Chitta means the Chitta which performs the Chutta function. So, likewise we have to understand. Patisandhi Chitta means 
One life, according to the Buddhist teachings, is the production of one karma. So as long as the power of this karma remains, this life will continue. So there are two reasons a life can end. Naturally, the power of the karma gets is exhausted and it gets vanished. It, it finishes, we can call. The other way is some, by some extra addition, uh, by uh, extra means, like other means, we can prevent this power by producing its results. It means a karma which gave the rebirth will function throughout the life till it has its abilities there. So the life will continue. When it finishes, the life automatically naturally ends. Then the other way is sometimes this karma can be prevented by performing its functions. It can be done by physically harming us or it can be done by a past karma that we have done in our life, prasamsara. So there are many reasons, many, a few ways that how a karma can be prevented from giving results. So that is, at that time we call, we come into an untimely death. Untimely death happens when the karma which gave our rebirth is prevented by performing its functions by some extra means. If it gets naturally exhausted, at that time we call it's a natural death. So these are the two types of deaths. So the karma which gave the rebirth will perform, uh, will continue to uh, take our life. It is the main fuel, main force of our life. But at the end, for, uh, for if I take this as the mind stream, it was given by one karma. This mind stream will continue. So it, at, at a certain time, it comes to a death at the end. So when it is getting closer to the finishing, or naturally, or by an, an, another means, there is another karma will get the opportunity to get the, get the results. This is going to end after some time. Why another karma comes? So another karma gets the opportunity. If you remember in the previous lectures, in the lecture of ultimacy, we discussed about a phenomenon called upadi, upadino dhamma. Upadino dhamma means the realities which are going to happen by a karma which got the opportunity. We gave this term as labdo kasa. Labdo kasa karma. I have given the number also. If you go to the uh, page uh, number uh, 19, Patisandhi Chitta, the topic Patisandhi Chitta, fourth line, Raddo Kasakama, 1.22. If you forgot this meaning, please go to your, please you can go to a previous handouts, previous handout, because this handout is number uh, four. In the number one handout about the ultimacy, 1.22, you can refer to that. That's why I gave the numbers, because it's easy to uh, uh, go forth and back in the reference. So we can refer to 1.22 in your previous handout, so why it at your leisure, so you can find out what this is Labdo Kasa Kamma means. So this Labdo Kasa Kamma gets the opportunity. Why does it get the opportunity? Because we still have the craving to live, continue to live. I'll be explaining this phenomena in the next semester. How the samsara continues from life to life. It's a very broad topic. So I just mentioned because as long as we have the craving to live, when the Avakama which gave the rebirth is about to expire, another karma gets the opportunity to give the results. So this karma, when this karma, the power of this karma is exhausted, this karma, because of this karma, another karma, a new chitta will happen. Another life process, life process will start. In this new life process, in the new this life, the first chitta, which is caused by this new karma, is called the Patisandhi chitta. Patisandhi chitta. The Pali term gives the meaning. Patisandhi means linking. Linking. It's a chitta which links. That's why we call rebirth linking. We translate it. What does it link? The end of the previous life and the beginning of the next life. It's like a link. It doesn't let the mind to, uh, the mind stream to uh, uh, get completely vanished or to attain. It doesn't, it doesn't finish us. It keeps on continuing after death. Because death is a very important point. At the moment of death, the mind stream becomes weaker. It is supposed to stop. But why doesn't it stop? 
It doesn't stop. Uh, even though we say Patisanti Chitta makes the link, Patisanti Chitta is not the reason for the continuation. Reason is the Kamma. And why Kamma gives the opportunity? Because we have the craving to continue, live, Tanha. Why Tanha is there? Because we don't understand the real nature of this life, ignorance. So what the Buddha wanted to do for his what his disciples to do was to get rid of this ignorance, understand the true nature of the life. When you come into the enlightenment, the craving will be removed. When craving is no more, karma will not get the opportunity to give results. So this will stop at the death. At the death, it has to naturally stop. But why doesn't it stop according to the Buddha's teachings? Because of these three these three reasons: the karma, ignorance, uh, craving, and ignorance. So because of these three reasons, we get a new chitta. This new chitta is the link which makes, which starts the new life. So we call it Patisandhi Chitta. Patisandhi Chitta is not doing anything. What the problem is caused by the Kamma, ignorance and the craving. Patisandhi Chitta is a result. So we normally call this Patisandhi because it is a beginning Chitta. It's a beginning Chitta. It does a function, it does a function, it arises and it, it may, because if it doesn't arise, the continuation will not happen. But actual problem cause is the, the continuation is done by three other reasons. So this Chitta is part of some Chitta. Then in this life process, there will be another ending Chitta. And if the, if the latent craving is there, another Kama will get the result and it will give another Patisandhi and another life will start. Another life will start. So this final chitta is called the chuti chitta. Chuti chitta, dying chitta. Dying chitta doesn't mean dying chitta doesn't mean we die because of this chitta. No, this is the in this process this kama is producing chittas. The may or most of the chittas in our life are produced by this kama. But there are secondary chittas, so we call this basic chittas. Basic chittas means Patisanti chitta, Chuti chitta, and the chitta vyacha I am going to talk, discuss about next, discuss next, Bhavanga. So these are the primary basic chittas, means the consciousness which are begot by the Kama which gave our rebirth. So while we are living, we are getting different emotional chittas. These are secondary chittas by which we act, by which we react to the outside world which we make decisions and certain kinds of uh, activities in our life. So, the, so this, in this process, in the original uh, chitta process, the last chitta, because the kamma is exhausted, expired, is finishing, is the energy is going to come into an end. So last chitta which is produced by the kamma is called chutti chitta. Chutti chitta doesn't mean, chutti chitta is not the one, because it is not the reason for our death. Chutti chitta is like the life, last chitta in the process. There should be a last chitta in every process if it ends. So we just call it chutti chitta because the final chitta, so we call it the functioning is dying. But actually the death happens because of the kamma is unable to give results anymore. Either it has completely exhausted because naturally it has got exhausted or it was prevented by producing results any further. So these are the two reasons. If it gets naturally exhausted, we call it a natural death. If it was prevented by other means, we call it an untimely death. These are the two. And untimely death means, uh, uh, untimely, if it is uh, prevented by other reasons. But there is another timely death. Even the Kama has the energy. Our body cannot support the Kama. That depends on the life expectance in a certain era. So, for example, in these eras, people will not live more than 100, 100, uh, 100 years. Normally, it's 80, 80, 90, 70, according to the regions. So, that also a timely reason. So, not only because the Kama is exhausted, we get a timely death. Kama cannot perform the functioning of continue our life if the body cannot support it. This is also called a timely death. So anyway, so we'll uh, continue with the uh, Kicca lesson. So these are the two functionings, Patisanti Chitta and Chutta Chitta. And then we come to a Bhavanga Chitta. Bhavanga Chitta means, now, when this Patisanti has given, Patisanti Chitta arises and passes away instantly. But the force of the Kamas remains still our Chutti. So in between, a Chitta similar to the Patisanti Chitta will occur continuously, one after another. So this chitta, which I'm drawing in blue color, is also a production of the kama which gave the rebirth. So this will continue. This is the basic origin, original chitta of a person's life. We call it pakati chitta. 
in Kadawa 2, it's mentioned as Pakati. Pakati Chitta. Prakriti in Sanskrit. Pakati. Pakati means the original Chitta. If you go to the uh, page number 22, footnote 96, please. Page number 22, footnote 96. For the convenience of reference, when the distinct between Bhavanga Chittas and other Chittas need to be emphasized, the Prayana will be referred as the original Chitta, while the other Chittas will be referred as the secondary Chittas. In this handout, when I say secondary Chittas, I am referring to the Chittas other than this Patisandhi Bhavanga Chutti. So it should also be noted that sometimes even the Patisandhi and Chittas will also be referred as the original Chittas. Original Chitta or primary Chitta means these three types of Chittas which happen, which is given by the Kama which gave our rebirth. Beginning, end and throughout the middle. In this middle, middle process, sometimes we get certain mind processes which I drew in the beginning of the lesson. So we get certain mind processes in between. So these mind processes are the secondary chittas. Are the secondary chittas. In these mind processes, we have a very strong, powerful type of chitta. We call them javana chittas, which became kusala or akusala, if you remember the previous lecture. So all these are secondary chittas. The basic chittas are patisandhi, bhavanga and chuti. Right? Patisandhi, bhavanga and chuti. So if you go back to the uh, page number 21, So after the partition chitta passes away, a similar type of a chitta keeps on happening. So what is the function of this chitta? This chitta doesn't let the mind nama rupa stream to stop. Life means a continuation of nama rupa processes according to Buddhist teachings. It's not a self. It's not a self staying in a stable state, continuing throughout the life. It's a flux of nama rupa rising and flowing, rising and falling, rising and passing. It happens in generations. So this nama rupa process, it, which has a link, process in the chitta has a link to each other. So this link, the, the mind process is unbrokenly kept because of a chitta called bhavanga chitta. Bhavanga chitta means the kama, the, it's also product, produced by the kama which gave the rebirth. So we normally say life is a production of a kama. So the main reason for our life to continue is the Kama which gave the rebirth. Right? With the Kama which gave the rebirth. So this Bhavanga Chitta continues happening throughout the life. So it's called the Bhavanga is the Bhavasa Anga. We normally call Bhavanga is Bhavasa Anga. Bhavasa Anga. Bhava means life. Asa is genitive case of the life. Anga is a part. Anga is a part. The most important essential part of the life is considered this Bhavanga Chitta. The most important essential part of the life is this Bhavanga Chitta. So there is a teaching given in the Sangyutta Nikaya, you can refer to page number 21, given by the uh, Buddha and repeated by Sariputta in a, in a discussion with the Maha Kottita in the Mahavedala Sutta. It says, Ayu Usmacha Vinyanam Yadakayam Jahantimam Apavidyo Tadaseti Parabhattam Achetanam. It means, when the vitality, vitality, heat, and consciousness depart from this physical body, then it lies, they are cast away, being food for others without volition. It means our body becomes volition. It means in ancient days, this body was put into a, 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 open, open cemeteries. So normally, uh, and creatures come and eat. That was the custom in Indian culture. So it just put in open cemeteries. So that's why we say parabhatta machetana. Even if it was buried in the, on, inside the earth, it will be food for the worms. So that is called parabhatta. Parabhatta means becomes food for the, and also achetana without any volition. As mentioned in the commentarial literature, in the above stanza, Ayu refers to the Jivit Indriya. You can refer to the previous handouts, second handout 2.217 and 2.25. I have mentioned this uh, example. And Usma refers to the heat produced by the Kamma, Kamma the Chejo. It also has a number, you can refer to that. I gave an explanation on that day. Binyana is the Bhavanga Chitta. Binyana is explained as the Bhavanga Chitta. But actually, if you go to the foot number 89, footnote number 89, in the commentaries of Bhavajjima Nikaya, the term Binyana of the stanza is referred as a Chitta in general sense. Lady, Lady, Lady Seado has specifically mentioned that it refers to the Bhavanga Chitta. 
So therefore, uh, uh, normally vijnana refers to all the chittas because we discussed the namarupa pachya vijnana, vijnana pachya namarupa in the previous lecture, in one of the previous lectures. Buddha mentions without this vijnana, namarupa process will never continue or grow. It will never come into growth in the Mahanidana Sutta. So all the vijnana are necessary for the growth of our life, of our namarupa process. But at the same time, according to the tradition, since the bhavanga chitta is the main reason for the continuation. So whenever Lady Sado has mentioned that this vijnana is mostly what is referred is the bhavanga chitta. Because bhavanga chitta, this chitta, because of this chitta, our life keeps on continuing. These active chitta by which we experience the world, they happen in pockets, they happen in processes. In these processes, in between there are gaps. These gaps are filled by this bhavanga chitta. So whenever there is a no, there is no secondary chitta, always this primary chitta keeps on happening. So that's why while we are sleeping, this bhavanga chitta occurs. In between two mind processes, bhavanga chitta continues to happen. But we don't experience this, we don't remember this because it's a very subtle kind of a chitta. And the next thing is, when we are going to experience the outside world, there should be a contact with the outside world. Our mind should contact with the outside world. There should be a certain uh, impact, like the connection with the outside world. This yeah, connection, contact happen in few stages. One is the Passa Chetasika, which we discussed in the previous week, last week. The contact which, uh, the Chetasika, which contact the object, touches the object. The other contact is the object in the prior stage, in the initial stage, should make a contact with our mind stream. So in this contact happens the Bhavanga Chitta actually. So therefore, when an object has contacted the Bhavanga Chitta, these secondary Chittas will arise, then we experience the outside world. So our experience is based on the secondary Chittas. So why these secondary Chittas got the object? Because it, it got, uh, this object got contacted with the Bhavanga Chittas. For example, if I just say this object, Object have contact with the Bhavanga Chitta. Sometimes the Bhavanga Chitta makes the contact with the object. Whatever it is, there is a certain kind of a contact. It's not a physical contact. It's a one kind of a, a mental uh, relation with the object and the mind. So then, because of this relation, relationship, the secondary Chittas appear. With these secondary Chittas, we have these sense experiences in out of the six sense doors. So what happens? We see a we become aware of an object which contacted on this Bhavanga Chitta, at a later stage we become aware. So therefore these Chittas get the object which got connected to the Bhavanga. So there is no possibility that these Chittas will observe the Bhavanga itself. Bhavanga is like the base of the life. So objects get connected with the Bhavanga. These objects we experience. So the Bhavanga itself will never be an object of the contact with the Bhavanga. So therefore, we never, according to the tradition, we never experience the bhavanga. It, our experience is coming forth or springs out from the bhavanga. So it's like the base. So that is why we don't experience it. I'll repeat again. When we experience the world, we are experiencing a certain object. That object is experienced by the secondary chittas. So before the secondary chittas experience the object, there should be a relation of, with the mind stream with the object. That relationship happens in few levels. One level is the passa chetasika. Each chitta have this passa, it contacts with the object. But before that initial stage, this object to connected with our primary basic level of chitta. So after the object has got connected with this basic level, then the secondary chittas are able to observe this basic level. So, Therefore, this basic chitta will never be contacted with that particular chitta. So they are, they, therefore, the secondary chittas can never have this basic chitta as the object. That is why Bhavanga is not experienced by the ordinary secondary chittas. It can be experienced if the spiritual faculties are developed in an extraordinary level. So like, like for example, normal secondary chittas, we cannot know the other person's mind, we cannot know the subtle objects which are beyond our vision. There is a, another spiritual practice done in Buddhist and also other uh, Indian religious uh, ascetic practices that uh, the mind is capable of observing, perceiving things that are beyond the ordinary human experience in such 
when the mind is developed into such a level, there is a possibility that a person may go through and observe the Bhavanga, but that is a very extraordinary level of spiritual practice. Normally, when the secondary stars will never experience this, uh, this Bhavanga Chitta because that object, that Chitta will never have impact upon that Chitta. That is the main reason. So then we, uh, the, we go to the page number 21, paragraph number 3. Paragraph number 3. Patisandhi Bhavanga and Chuti Chittas cognize the object which was taken at the near death of the previous life. This object is threefold as Kamma, Kamma Nimitta, Gati Nimitta. So we mentioned that when a person is going to die, another Kamma gets the opportunity and it gives a, a rebirth at the Patisandhi. So at this moment of near death moment, these Chittas, so at that level there are certain secondary Chittas, secondary Chittas are happening in processes. These secondary Chittas, cognizes a certain object, object brought by the Kama, that's important to know, object, because this Kama is going to give results, this Kama brings a certain object to the mind, it has a great influence at that time, so this, because of this Kama, a certain object is brought to the mind, this object, so mind, at that level, we normally say the mind has a con uh, forced to continue living, craving to living. At the same time, this mind inclines towards this object. It inclines towards this object. Therefore, the result of this karma will also have the same object, which was known at the near death moment. The reason for this Patisandhi uh, Chitta to take the near death object is at the moment of death, close to death, the mind get inclined, we can call it attached, but it's not always attachment, inclined towards the object presented by the karma. So at that level, there are two types of inclinations. One inclination is a basic inclination of all the lives to continue living. That is found throughout our whole life. At this level, moment of death, we have an inclination towards the presentation of the karma, which is going to give the result. So therefore, in this next life, when the Kamma produces all these results, they will have an object. This Patisanti Bhavanga Chitta has an object of the past life. So the secondary Chittas, when they take an object, that object has to be connected with the Bhavanga Chitta. So therefore, Bhavanga Chitta will never be an object of the secondary Chittas. Then we go to the next paragraph. All the other Chittas in a particular life arise like springing forth from the Bhavanga stream. Life springing forth. Right? This is an example. Similarly, life continuum acts as the door out of which the secondary consciousness occurs. Therefore, the nature of the Bhavanga Chitta has a great influence on the character of a being. Because we decide the character of a being because of the secondary Chittas. Because with that, we react to the world. We make our actions. So we decide person is uh, more anger, angry, uh, he's ang uh, with more anger, lustful person, so forth. And a very kind person. So the secondary Chittas manifest our character. So these secondary chittas come out of the Bhavanga Chitta. Out of means they are supported by the Bhavanga Chitta. It's like the Bhavanga is like the door. Therefore, the qualities of the Bhavanga greatly influence to the qualities of the secondary chittas. And this Bhavanga Chitta is brought by the previous Kama. So previous Kama, when we do the previous Kama, this Kama was done in a previous life. So the states of the mind at that level, we do the Kama. When we do the Kama, the states of our mind how, uh, how much the Loba Dosa Moha, Loba Dosa Moha was at that time is influenced to this Bhavanga. So when the secondary Chittas are coming out of, out of Bhavanga, it's not coming like out of a box, it's caused by the Bhavanga, it's, it's coming forth light, from Bhavanga, light coming forth from the Bhavanga. So the qualities of the Bhavanga greatly influence the qualities of the secondary Chitta. So therefore, our character is known through the acts of our second, done by our secondary Chitta. So they are greatly influenced by the Bhavanga. So Bhavanga is produced by the Kamma. So the Kamma, when we do the Kamma at that level, sorts of mental states that we had cause this so therefore uh, 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 is affected by the mental states we had so that part come also affected by the bhavanga of that life so it happens like a uh, like a chain it happens like a chain but it doesn't mean that the secondary chittas are completely taken under control by the bhavanga no i'm just telling there is an influence there is an influence it's not completely taken so there always a change is possible always a change is possible. So how do we say, when we, when the Bhavanga is 
with a wisdom. When the Bhavanga wisdom means there are wisdom element in this Bhavanga level, Bhavanga Chitta. At that time, the secondary chitta tend to be having more wisdom. If the Bhavanga Chitta is associated with a pleasurable feeling, it's a negative feeling, it's negative means it cannot be experienced, it's a negative present feeling, these secondary chittas tend to be joyful. If this chitta is associated with the uh, intermediate upekka feeling, secondary chittas tend to be more upekka. If this bhavanga chitta is, uh, uh, is uh, created by a caused by a kamma, which was done prompted or unprompted, so therefore the person keenness and not interest, uh, interested nature is also affected by this bhavanga chitta. So I have given the explain this in detail because of the time I'll just briefly explain and skip this point. So what I want to say is the secondary chittas are greatly influenced by the nature of the bhavanga, but it's not completely under control. There can be changes. There, there surely there are changes. Then if you come to the page number 22, there is a teaching given by the Buddha in the Anguttara Nikaya. He mentions Pabasara Vidam Bhikkave Chitta. It means mind is mind, monks this mind is bright. This bright mind get diluted by incoming uh, how incoming uh, defilements. At the same time, the next 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 sutta he mentions this mind is brighter. At the same time, this mind gets freed from defilements by uh, and also get freed from the defile. So he mentions about a bright mind and then mentions that this bright mind get defiled by the incoming defilements and then it becomes uh, freed from the incoming defilements. So therefore, he was talking about a bright mind and um, this mind getting deluded and this mind getting freed from the defilements. So when he mentioned getting freed from the defilements, he was mentioning about the kusala. Kusala means by which you get, get away from the defilements. Getting defined means you come into the uh, Akusala states. So the Theravadians explain this phenomena as now the Bhavanga Chitta continues. So with the Bhavanga, when the Bhavanga is continuing, there are certain processes happening. So there are forceful Chittas in these processes. So in some processes, if these forceful processes, if you remember Akusala, Akusala, we define, if they are defined by Akusala, and sometimes it, def it is purified kusala. So this bhavanga chitta is a result of a past karma. According to the Theravadians, the karma, result of a past karma can never be defiled by akusala because it's an outcome of a past karma. Even the karma was defiled, the result of the karma will never have akusala chesika. Akusala chesikas are always uh, with a higher force and intentional attribute. So this bhavanga chitta is said to be brighter. Brighter. Bright, brighter means it is undefined. Here brightness doesn't mean a physical type of a brightness. It is free from the defilements. So at the latest, then the secondary chittas which comes forth from this bhavanga, when they get defiled at the higher, strong level of javana level, because these bhavanga chittas are the primary chitta, basic chitta of the one mind stream, of a one life, uh, mind stream of a life. So therefore, when this level at this level when the mind is occupied by defilements the basic chitta of the mind stream is also said to be like defiled it's a figurative kind of a speech so because why it is can be said as defiled because this is the basic chitta for the whole mind stream then here in this level also when the kusana ar arises at that time buddha mentions it becomes Freed from the Agantuka Kilesa. Agantuka Kilesa means become free from the incoming Kilesa. Incoming Kilesa means he is talking about the uh, 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 uneradicated defilements. So at this level, when the Kusala Chitta appears, the mind becomes purified. So purified level and the defiled level are found in these Chittas. The bright Chitta is neither purified, is neither defiled. That's why he mentioned the second explanation. Even the uh, Bhavanga Chitta, the original Chitta is undefiled, we cannot say it's purified. It's, it's not free from, it's, it has not suppressed the defilement, it's just undefiled. Undefiled doesn't mean it's free from defilement. Free from means it is not suppressing defilement. It, at that level, mind is not getting liberated from the defilement. At the same time, it's not associated, so it's not defiled. So there are three stages. 
the undefined stage, the stage of de getting deluded or defining, defined, and also getting freed from the defined. Freed from means it's suppressing and getting away from the defined. So this is the level we normally call as kusala. At that level, the mind becomes purified. Since the bhavanga is the primary chitta of the whole mind stream, he also mentioned the mind becomes undefiled at this uh, because of at this level. So bhavanga chitta is neither defiled, is not free from the defilements. Because when the secondary chittas become defiled of getting free from the defilements, the main chitta, basic chitta, is also said to be free from defilements and defiled. So it's like a figurative speech according to the Theravada. Then we come into the in this brightness of this bhavanga chitta. So we mentioned that the kamma produces this bhavanga chitta. So the level of this kamma causes to the level of this bhavanga. So it's undefiled. So undefiledness has different stages in another point. So if it is the bhavanga chitta is produced by a very strong powerful kamma, this bhavanga chitta becomes very brighter, very, uh, very brighter, very clearer. If it is produced by a weaker kamma, this clarity is getting lesser. So we also mentioned objects makes an impact with this bhavanga chitta. So when the object is making an impact, so more the clarity is, more subtler, uh, subtler the objects which will make an impact. So if the bhavanga chitta is not is, a, is in a less uh, clear state, less bright state, bright here doesn't mean the physical brightness, bright state is not uh, powerful or it's not very uh, clear in that sense. So more subtle objects will not make an impact on this. So therefore, the patisandhi which gave the, uh, the kama which gave the rebirth has a great influence, great, greatly determine our levels of intellectual capacity. So it means, if we read the paragraph in the page number 22, last paragraph, more the bhavanga is brighter, subtler the objects that can strike at it. When the bhavanga chitta is with less brightness, it is not sensitive to subtler objects. The newly arising Javana Chittas knows the objects that have struck at the life continuum. Impulsive consciousness is unable to apprehend the objects that have not struck at the Bhavanga Chitta, out of which the impulsive mind thought process comes forth. So always the object has to have an impact with the Bhavanga. Therefore, the nature of the life continuum plays a major role determining the intellectual capacities of a being. All the beings who are born in the woeful realm possess a very less bright Bhavanga Chitta, so their level of understanding is always limited. Even the intellectual standards of beings who are born in the blissful realm, in the Sukati, greatly depends upon the brightness of the life continuum. Beings, are, beings, are brighter, uh, beings with brighter Bhavanga are wiser, according to the tradition. So, it's for example, if we make it as a process phenomenon, the, I've given the three diagrams about the Chitta Viti, how it works. How it works. For example, the Bhavanga. And you know what it's all. So these are all Bhavanga, just names. And then we have a mind do adverting. Then we have seven Javana. So object has made an impact, we can say in the both ways, whatever it is, object has made an impact in the Bhavanga. That object is known with the uh, chitta <coughs> high intensity. So the level of this knowing, this of these uh, chitta we know the same object which strike, struck at the struck at the Bhavanga chitta. So the level of this knowing, understanding depends upon the person's education levels, spiritual capacities, his conduct, many reasons are there. So then he understands it to a certain level. If he wants to, wants to understand more deeper, more subtler, then we, he makes another determination or an effort with, for example, seven Bhavanga and Javana. He makes, a, he makes another effort towards to know a more subtle aspect of the object or something related to that object. It means he wants to deepen the understanding about the same object. So he makes an effort towards the, uh, to, to know about it. So it's like thinking. He starts to think about, ponder about it based on various, various reasons. So then, 
at a later stage because of his uh, effort to know know the uh, subtler aspects of the object what happened now he is expecting to see a more subtler level of this object so what happened is that object i call it subtle object is object will strike at this bhavanga because why does it strike because we make the he makes an intention to know about it it's like avajana it's like i make an intention so when the object is known by the basic mind process what happens because of this knowing this object is directed towards the bhavanga so this bhavanga which happens in between they are the object which was known as the jamana chittas are direct to this bhavanga so this bhavanga level of this bhavanga is different from the level of the bhavanga in sleeping this bhavanga is more active because after it's known by this chittas the object is said to be focused on the bhavanga so then by another chitta vidhi we he makes uh, a determination to know about the more aspects of this aspects of the object so then what happens if they are based on the subtle of the object it is strike at the bhavanga chitta so if this bhavanga chitta at this level is not subtle or brighter enough corresponding to the subtleness of this of this object this object may not strike at the bhavanga so what happens it will appear to him like darkness like darkness means he will say i don't understand this point it's difficult to go further so what is the reason one reason is the bhavanga is not subtle enough to know such a subtle objects so that is the limitation of a being so normally venerable nagasena mentions there are a certain objects that can on, that can be known by sariputta but there are certain objects that cannot be known by sariputta can be known by pachega buddhas so sariputta's bhavanga is not subtle enough to know certain certain objects subtle objects so even the pachega buddhas has certain limits so likewise where the, the if the bhavanga is not subtle enough to match the subtleness of the object it will not not come, it can make a come, an impact so it will appear as a darkness to that person darkness means it's not like uh, darkness i'm talking it like a darkness so if you go to the visuddhi marga they are in dhatu kamatana there are four met five methods mentioned in the beginning so some methods suits for the ones who are very wise but that method a person with a less intellectual capacity tries it says it appears to him as darkness he doesn't understand it what, what? so then the uh, visuddhi marga has given instruction to explain the kamatta in a different way so when it is explained in a different way that person may understand it. that is why uh, how to, uh, certain objects subtle objects are not known by certain people because of the uh, clarity level of bhavanga then a question comes this bhavanga is determined based by the past karma so if i say the based on the bhavanga's clarity objects are known so what is the impact that we can make in the present life so even though i generally mention that the object and the clarity of bhavanga has a great relation object may not strike at the bhavanga because of two reasons one reason is the, uh, the brightness of the bhavanga another reason is another reason is for example this at this level the chitta knew the object and based on this understanding he develops he tries to develop the understanding if his bhavanga is subtle enough he may see the or he it may strike at his bhavanga then he may know the subtle aspects of the object the next reason is this type this subtle object may not strike at the bhavanga if the level of the wisdom of this javana is not enough there are two reasons if the level of this wisdom of the javana is not powerful strong enough then the subtle object may not strike at the bhavanga at that level what he has to do is he has to develop the level of the wisdom of the javana he has to study more or he may be he has to make a proper conduct he has to develop his concentration for example in vipassana meditation buddha mentioned sometimes the yogis doesn't understand the true nature of the life you can see in the mahasunyata sutta he mentions go back to your concentration develop your concentration uh, na nature uh, uh, develop your mind in the nature your mind in the concentration then you will be able to observe the characteristics clear clearly and also it's mentioned when someone is going to recall the past lives 
some object like the past life will not be clear to him at a certain level. So the instructions are given in the Visuddhi Magga. Go back to your jhana, make your mind stronger, then try back, try, then the object may appear to you. So therefore, the, a subtle object may not strike at the Bhavanga because of two reasons. One reason is the capacity of the Javana, the preceding Javana. Preceding Javanas was not enough. Wisdom capacity, sometimes the concentration capacity, they all contribute to the understanding. Mindfulness capacity, they are not enough. So then we have to develop this, then the subtle objects may strike at the Bhavanga. And also we have to, yeah, Buddhism accept that there is a limitation that you can develop. It means an animal can never come to the level of a human's intellect because its bhavanga is produced by a akusala. It's a very less bright bhavanga. Animal may develop to a certain level, but it will have limitations. So when I say, when we develop the levels of this javana, subtle bhavangas may strike at our, strike, subtle objects may strike at our bhavanga. It doesn't mean, it is, according to Buddhism, it is not unlimited. It is limited. It's like this. One may develop this level. For example, a person with Ahetuka Bhavanga, very less bright Bhavanga, how much he tried, according to the tradition, a Patibhaga Nimitta, Nimitta of a Jhana, will never strike at his Bhavanga. It will always have a limitation. Another point, uh, uh, so likewise, uh, for example, that's why we normally say, a person can never be a Buddha unless he have come to the level of higher, higher, fulfill the Paramis. The reason is, he is, uh, a person's life may not have such a bhavanga that is suitable to be contacted with the subtle object. So there are two reasons. So if we just focus on the for, uh, ability, uh, brightness of the bhavanga, we are coming to the, say that the, all the things are determined by kama. So therefore, according to Buddhism, kama plays a huge role. Our capacities are limited because of kama. But at the same time, we should know we can increase. There is a, uh, uh, a being is not being is born with a certain capacity of his intellect, but we don't possess that capacity from the beginning. So it has to be developed. It can be developed within the life. So it is the responsibility of a savaka to come to the highest level of the capacity that he possesses. So for that, we have to, the persons have to develop through studying, practicing, and these things. But it will always have a limitation. So that is the importance, uh, influence of the Bhavanga. The next thing is, Bhavanga also has a great influence to this Manodwara Avajana, Avajana Chitta. Because these Javana Chittas, which know the object clearly, there's a clarity in understanding, but that clarity, the Javana Chittas appear, what, or the object which was presented to them by this Avajana Chitta, this M.A. Chitta we normally call. So this M.A. Chitta will cognize the uh, object in a certain manner, based on that, this Javana will understand. For example, if the object has to be contemplated, Contemplating and knowing is two things. Chitta may know object, but it, it is, doesn't contemplate. Contemplation should happen means there is a forceful focusing on a certain aspect. So the Avatina Chitta just knows the object. So if someone wants to know the non-selfness of an object, this Avatina Chitta has to take the object, the non-self aspect of the object. Javana Chitta will develop the capacities, the spiritual capacities, looking at it again and again, and the, the wisdom or the levels of understanding will increase. So this is what is done by, is called contemplation. This is the initial state, the object is taken for the contemplation. Bhavanga has a great influence of this as well. For example, if the Bhavanga is Ahetuka, Manodwa Ravajana will never take the non-self aspect of an object. So this, uh, uh, even how much the Dhamma is preached to that person, according to the Buddhist teaching, Manodwa Ramajana will never take the non-self attribute, so the Javana will not contemplate on the non-self attribute. So therefore, Bhavanga has a great influence to our lives. One thing is basically, it, it limits the understandings, but this saying is sometimes, if I say partially, is a very uh, negative type of a saying. So what I want to say is, even though we mentioned that the Bhavanga has a great influence to the capacities, intellectual capacities, it's like the capacities are like this. So we are born or athlete, normally we are at a certain level. So it can be developed up to this level. So the capacity is, for example, a, may, a being, how much he tries may not attain the Arahant Chip in a certain life because the capacities are not enough. 
If we take the example of a Buddha, it's a very clear cut. We normally say according to the tradition, a person, how much he tries at this moment, he will never be a Buddha. Because the capacities have a limitation that you can go. So, the, uh, so the, what we can develop is, is this, this point, so we can develop the levels of Javana and so forth, so then we can experience more subtler, subtler objects, make contact of Bhavanga, but still, there will always be a limitation that in our growth. So this is another point that we want to emphasize on Bhavanga. The final point, uh, yeah. Yeah, these are the points that I want to emphasize. So I'll conclude the lecture. I'll take the Javana to the next week because uh, there's no time left. We already time has passed. So what we discussed today is about out of the uh, Kichas, 14 Kichas, we focused on Patisandhi, Chuti, and Bhavanga Kichas, which are the primary chittas of a person's life. Primary chittas of a person's life. Uh, and uh, the Patisandhi chitta, uh, is begot by the kamma of a previous, uh, previously done kamma, and is the first chitta of a certain life. And the last chitta is called the chuti chitta. We don't die because of chuti chitta. We die because of the kamma get expired or uh, some other reason. But it is the last chitta of the mind world. Then we have a bhavanga chitta which acts in between. This bhavanga chitta greatly influence our life characters, but it is not completely under control, our life is not completely determined by the Bhavanga, it is influenced by the Bhavanga, this is the point, it is influenced by the Bhavanga. Some doctrines of some teachers mention, all happens because of past karma, you cannot do anything, it is always determined. Buddha says, if someone says everything is determined by the past karma, you will never have effort. For he mentioned three, three doctrines, everything is determined by the past karma. Everything is decided by an uh, ultimate God, or everything happens without a reason. I mean, these three doctrines are accepted by a person. He will never have a great, he will never yield effort to change the life. So he mentioned these three doctrines are very dangerous. Everything happens because of past karma, determined by the past karma. Everything is decided by a God, because we don't have any will. And then the next point is, everything happens spontaneously, whatever you do doesn't matter whether your growth or decline in the spiritual life, your next rebirth and so forth, you cannot make a decision, it will happen according to natural phenomena. So these three doctrines he mentioned, especially in the spiritual aspect, he's not talking about mainly about the daily social aspect, spiritual aspect, you will never have an effort to achieve something. Because effort doesn't make any sense. So in, when we say Bhavanga is greatly influencing our character, it doesn't mean it's always all, all determined. So still we can increase. And also we have bad practices, we have our capacities may decrease. So if, Bhavanga, if the Bhavanga has wisdom, the person, the secondary chittas tend to be more wiser. If the Bhavanga is with Somanasa, it will, the person manifest joyfulness in his life. Is, uh, if Bhavanga is with Upekka, he, he manifests more intense determined feelings in the life, secondary, uh, secondary chittas. Prompted and unprompted loss of the Kamma, which produce the Bhavanga, also affect to our keenness and less uh, energetic nature. And the next thing is the brightness of the Bhavanga affects how subtler the objects are known by the secondary chittas. And then also it affects the mind do manodwara avajana, avajana chitta, manodwara chitta to know certain aspects of the object. Finally, object may strike at the Bhavanga, decide based on the uh, uh, subtleness of the brightness of the Bhavanga at the same time, level of the Javana which preceded them. So what the person has to do is increase this level so he may see, observe subtle objects which may contact in his Bhavanga when the capacities are developed. Right. This is the uh, point that I want to emphasize, points I want to emphasize in the lecture. So we discuss about the function. Yes, sir. <coughs> Yeah. Enlightened one? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. 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 So it, it is a uh, uh, Akusala Chitta, it's defiled. Kamma is defiled. Akusala Kamma is a defiled nature. Akusala Kamma is defiled because of it arises a Sampirana. So Santirana Chitta doesn't associate any Akusala Chetasikas. So we say it is undefiled. 
So uh, based on this undefinedness, the ma ma uh, mentalities, which are uh, not materials, material things. So this, therefore, this sampirna is undefined. So the nature of bhavanga chitta is like a mirror. It always get connected with the objects. So more the brighter, the clearer the mirror, more subtler, the clearer the objects may contact with it. It's like a mirror. Don't take it as a physical attribute. That's how we have to explain it. So this Sampirna Chitta, which is caused by a, a defiled Bhavanga, is not defiled, with the defiled Kamma, is not defiled, but its brightness or clarity is lower. That's the point. Why it is undefiled? Because Akusala Chetasikas never arise in the Vipaka Chitta. Akusala Chetasikas, these emotions are always begot by an intentional force. That is the reason. So, uh, so uh, among the uh, less bright bhavangas, the most less bright bhavanga is the Santirana produced by the Akusala Chitta. I have explained this in the sequence in a sequence in the book. Yes. Um, the next birth yeah. will be uh, the kamma of only this birth, or it can be even the kamma of past births. Yes. So according to the uh, uh, teachings, there is a sutta. I forgot the. Uh, I can give you the name next week. Uh, Buddha mentions that it's not only the kamma which uh, gave the, uh, which was done in this life. It can be the kammas of the past lives even. Because uh, some uh, ascetics who had the uh, divine ability to see, observe the kamma and its result, they saw. Some people were doing bad things, bad kammas, and suddenly they are born in a good realm. Right? Suddenly they are born in a good realm. This can be reasons because it's these, if these kammas are not fixed kammas, not very strong kammas, one or two kammas that they have done in this good kammas may come into front at the near death moment, or a kamma that they have done in the past life can come in front. So therefore, both are possible. Both are possible. Okay, so then we'll conclude the lecture. We'll meet on the next. Subject.